a beautiful day in Sweden and I'm on my way to meet my hero and friend, tenor saxophone player Mrs. Sandström. We'll talk about his incredible career, how he jammed with JJ Johnson's rhythm section when he was 15 and also the offer he got from Joni Mitchell to be her piano player. Carbo mission. So how long have you been here, Nisse? 20 years. Okay, so uh, I'm here in beautiful Sweden and I'm outside my hometown of Katrineholm, Sweden. And I'm here with one, one of my absolute biggest heroes. It's the tenor saxophone player Nisse Sandström. And he's, uh, yeah, I, I was for, I've been fortunate enough to play with him a few times. Uh, he has worked with pretty much everybody in on the jazz world here and uh, and also he was kind enough to let me use one of his tunes on my album slide side we recorded a few years ago so nice and <laughs> mm -hmm. so we're we're from the same we share our hometown and uh, so we have a lot of Friends in common, and Nisi, you started playing at the tender old age of. You were young. You, you grew up. You were born in the forties, early forties, right? Yes, forty-two. And then early on, jet for people outside Sweden, they probably don't know this, but there's a there was a very early on there was a jazz tradition in Sweden, or we started listening to to jazz, and Lou Armstrong came to Sweden, in, I think, in nineteen thirty-three. Yes. And you got to hear jazz early on when you were four years old. Yeah, uh, my family, my, my parents, they loved jazz music. Okay. My father's uh, favorite, he had two big favorites, Louis Armstrong and um, Paul Robson. Paul Robson was not a jazz singer. No, no. He, he had a fantastic voice. Yeah, I and, think he mm -hmm. was probably the first one that, that sang uh, "Old Man River" from the from Showboat. That yeah. was his big hit. That's right. Yeah. And the song that I grew up with was, was a kind of a lullaby. Uh, My curly-headed baby. Okay. And I can still hear the introduction from from the orchestra. Yeah. And then it's a minor tune that goes up to 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 major. Okay. Very nice tune. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and when I was four years old, on my birthday, my mother took me to to the music store in Katrina. And you were four years old. Yeah. Then. yeah. And uh, she she bought me a record with the Kuma Hawkins when Day Day is done. Okay. And I have it recorded up here in my hand. Yeah. So so you're four years old, you hear mm -hmm. Coleman Hawkins, the yes. legendary tenor player. Yeah. And so your career, did you sort of, it, I mean, obviously made a huge impact on you. Yeah, I, I was listening to it almost every day. Okay. We had a, a big, busy kind of radio gramophone. Yeah. Uh, phonograph. <laughs> That's great. And uh, I had, uh, at the same time, I had a, a new pal, a little guy who came from Holland. Okay. Uh, we were playing together, and uh, he showed me his right hand. He had just two fingers was uh, missed. He he, had, he said bombardement. Oh really? So, yeah. so during the so he yeah. was hurt during, yeah. during the war during then. The war, yeah. yeah. Wow, and missed a couple of fingers. And yeah. was he in, into music too? Uh, I think he, yeah. he. I took him with me, and we li were yeah. listening to this record. <laughs> wow! And what what kind of music did you? So you had this big radio gramophone with the seventy eights, and what kind yeah. of music uh, was there? We had uh, Louis Armstrong, as I said, uh, and uh, Glenn Miller, and. Uh, Tommy, Do uh, Tommy Dorsey, yeah. uh, with Frank Sinatra, who sang oh, What a Beautiful Morning. And then we had a, a, a famous Swedish jazz trio, Nisselin, the same name as my oh, uh, Lind's yeah. Hot Trio. Okay. Uh, accordion, guitar, and bass. They were. F oh, yeah, I, I remember. Yeah, fantastic. Those guys could oh. play. Yeah, uh, they played uh, "That's a Plant" and uh, okay. "St. Louis Blues." Yeah, of course it was mm -hmm. "That's a Plant" on one side of the '78, and then you had to flip yes. it over and "St. Louis yeah. Blues" on the mm -hmm. other one. 
Yeah, but uh, powerful music. Oh yeah, yeah. But then uh, I started school at seven, and uh, jazz music went away. Okay. Uh, till till uh, I was twelve years old, and my mother took me. It's always the mother, you know. Yeah, it is. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it was the same for me because my my mom. She she forced me to start playing the recorder when I was eight years old, and I absolutely I didn't like it at all. But I sort of stuck with it, and you know, look where I ended up <laughs> <laughs> with no job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, we we um, she took me to the Glenn Miller movie, uh, Glenn Miller story. Uh, yes, with, her name. Oh, with Jimmy Stewart, yeah. was Glenn Miller, uh, and uh, June Allison, uh, yeah, his wife. And Louis Armstrong was playing in that movie with the uh, Trump, Trump Young. Trump and Young was and, uh, who was the clarinet player in, in uh, this group? Bon Vigard. Bon Vigard, yeah, yeah. And uh, a, a guy on tenor who played very well, I can't remember his name, but, but they played bass in street blues. Yeah. And I, 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 I felt that this is uh, something that I want to, I want to be uh, one of them. Oh, so, so you're 12 years old, you're sitting in, yeah. watching the movie, and it yeah. made a huge impact. Yeah. yeah, I got religious. Oh, really? Yeah. So Glenn Miller saved you. Yeah, <laughs> Glenn Miller saved me. <laughs> and made me to a better boy. I was... Uh, oh, really? Uh, ...problem. Uh, I, I was uh, hopeless. Oh, so, so before this religious experience with Glenn Miller, you, you were one of these guys, these I little kids running out. And, uh, oh, really? Uh, yeah. But after this, I, I was kind of like a lamb. <laughs> really? Wow. And uh, I started to listen to, to other kind of jazz music. Okay. My Davis, Jerry Mulligan. Yeah. Uh, mostly music played by black musicians. Yes. So uh, Saxophone players yeah. like Lucky Thompson. And the, the, yeah, I mean, you're... you're you you're a tenor player. Was the tenor saxophone was that sort of your from the beginning? What kind of the sound you had in in? Yeah. 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 I I, I liked Stan Getz and Alcorn, yeah. Sue Sims. Yeah. Great players. Great players. But but uh, I was very influenced by Hank Mobley and Sonny Rollins. Yeah. Charlie Parker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and then so and when. I I read somewhere that you had one lesson in your life on because it used to be that yeah. if you want to play the saxophone you have to start you start on clarinet yes and you had right. one clarinet lesson yeah <laughs> and I ran away from that lesson crying really? because it was a very mean guy okay who, who uh, he he said to me you tr you you think that you are going to fool me. Uh, because I, I was trying to, it was scales, you know. And yeah. They it was like da 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 you were da 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 you had played yeah, for a while. Yeah, okay. Yes. Oh, okay. So, so it so wasn't like you were a complete beginner. Si no. since, since then, I have never liked to take lessons. And yeah. Well, I, I took my driver's license. Oh, but, you, you had to take your yeah. driver's license. Yeah, <laughs> driving lessons. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But so, so you're about 14, 15 years old, and then, mm -hmm. of course, you started basically working. You were a yes. painter, um, basically house painting. You were. Yes, uh, I was a house painter. Yeah. Yeah. Learning the trade. Yeah. And uh, at the same time, I was playing. Uh, we had started in Katrin Holm. Yeah. And I had friends in Neuschöping. Neuschöping yeah. is a big, big, big city town. of, of uh, almost a hundred uh, thousand five, people. Five <laughs> Swedish miles from Katrin Holm. Yeah. So pretty close. Yeah. Uh, and 1957, J.J. Johnson, this famous trombone oh. player, yeah. leader, he was on a tour in Sweden with a quintet. Bobby Jasper, the Belgian tenor, the tenor player, player, yeah. Uh, Tommy Flanning on the piano and Wilbur Little bass and Elvin Jones drums. And we became friends with them, me wow. and my parents. So you were 15 years old mm -hmm. then? Yeah. And we asked them, can you come to tomorrow, it was a Sunday, yeah. uh, down to this people's house? Yeah, Folkets, Folkets people's house, yeah. yeah. And play with us. 
and they show up off past 10 in the with the förmiddag. Oh yeah, in the morning. In, in the, the morning, morning. yes. And so okay, let me get this right. So you guys, you're so you're two 15 year olds, or you, mm -hmm. you're 15 years. You ask JJ Johnson and his band to show up for your gig. Yes. And they showed up. Yeah. They showed. <laughs> Tommy Flanagan, Wilbur Little, and uh, Elvin Jones. So they, they came. So the the, the, the came. And they played with us, and we had so much fun. Uh, they wow. were so nice. Yeah. And, and they really supported us. That's fantastic. And when they come to came to Catherine Hall, yeah, same thing. We had a jam session that started two o'clock in the night, and we were playing <laughs> till six o'clock in the morning. And then, and, did and you have to go up and paint houses the following day? No, uh, no, no. <laughs> I, I think it was, it was a Saturday evening. Saturday, okay, yeah. And uh, Bobby Asman was. With, and, and he, I, he was a great player. Yeah, and great player. He, he, he said, "Try my saxophone." He had a kind of uh, metal a mouthpiece. metal mouthpiece. Uh, yes, yeah, uh, Selmer. Yeah, uh, uh, that was uh, fantastic. Wow! So but they were so nice. Yeah, we had so much fun. That's great. So, so that's quite a fast career. You start basically started playing when you're 14. Yes. And by 15, you were playing with J.J. Johnson's rhythm section. Yes. Yeah. And Bobby Jasper. <laughs> and Joe, Bobby no. Jasper. Uh, J.J., he never showed no, no. on, on this. Uh, but uh, yeah. what, what a quintet. Also. When wow. they played in Stockholm in yeah. uh, this King's Garden. Uh, yeah. Which was, is a huge outdoor yeah. uh, park right yeah. by the basically yeah. downtown Stockholm, close to the castle and the opera house. And exactly. everything. It's huge. Yeah. It's um, kind of like Central Park, it, exactly. it, sort of, in New and, York Central and, uh, Park. And it was 30,000 people. 30,000 people there. To them. Bernd Rosingen uh, yeah. uh, told, told me this. Uh, and uh, the weather was, was fantastic. Yeah. And it was unforgettable concert. Wow. Mm. Wow. And uh, they loved Sweden. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Tommy Flanagan, he made a very nice ballad. Uh, into, not a slow ballad. Okay. Medium, uh, Dalarna. Oh, okay. Which, which De is, Carlia, I think mm, we would call exactly. it. Yeah, in English. Mm. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and of course, we, we, Stan Getz did write. He took a Swedish folk song and yes. wrote Dear Old Stockholm. Yeah. And which which uh, is very popular in, in America and yeah. Canada. Yeah, and then uh, St uh, Quincy Jones, Stockholm Sweetening, right? Stockholm Sweetening, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so we, we've been fortunate enough to, I don't know what it is about Sweden, but they, they do come here, a lot of musicians. Yeah. And uh, it's the meatballs, maybe, you the know, Swedish meatballs. You know, uh, Rolf Eriksson, or Stella, trumpet player, Swedish. Yeah. He was good friend, a good friend with Charles Mingus. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. The guy, he, he, uh, the guys in uh, Mingo's band, they said, we can't have, we ha we have uh, we ha him with us. He's white. He uh, was uh, very, very white. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> Mingus, he, he, uh, he shouted, he's not, wi he's not white, he's Swedish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the difference. That's yeah. the difference. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so, you're, so you're 15, 16, and then... Um, you 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 won a there was a was called the TV jazz competition. There was yes. like a big youth back in the yeah. late fifties. It was a youth mm -hmm. uh, fifty nine nineteen fifty nine. Yeah, right. kind of like yeah. nowadays we have American Idol or stuff mm -hmm. like that. You go out and you play for an audience. Yes, and you you won this. They, actually, there wasn't a category for you. There was just the groups competed. Yes. but when they heard you. They gave you. They decided then and there. We're gonna give him the solo, the yeah, solo yeah, prize. So solo prize, yes. Yeah, 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 that and was you were sixteen years old. Sixteen, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Did something come of that? Did you get any other gigs? From well, I, I learned to to, to play uh, with the best uh, some of the best musicians in Stockholm. Yeah. Bernt Rosengren, which yeah. one, still one of my favorites oh, on, on tenor saxophone. Fantastic tenor player. And and. Uh, all the guys around him, yeah. and I went to Stockholm often and play on jam sessions yeah. at home, uh, at some musician's house yeah. or home. Yeah, it, and of course, I mean, the, mm -hmm. the Swedish jazz scene back then, you had some, like, 
Eje Tillin was the, yeah. the famous trombone player. You played it yes. in his group for yes, a while. Yes, yeah, in the 60s. Yeah. And we had great musicians like Lars Gullin. Oh, yeah, uh, Lars Gullin. And yeah. Bengt Halberg. Oh, yeah. Uh, fantastic. Yeah. The highest class. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're great musicians. And, and with you, though, you, a lot of these guys, I mean, in order to, as, to survive as a musician, you play what's called commercial gigs. You play, you know, recording mm. sessions or you, you play a show you go and play sound of music or whatever but you always played jazz you never yes. really compromised you 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 yeah. had your day job yeah. painting yeah, yeah. houses and and I, and I was playing bebop music. you're a bebop yeah. player yeah and, and uh, i love that music yeah i had a period when i when uh, when i played the so-called uh, avant-garde free form yeah, kind of jazz free form, music, yeah. Uh, some years uh, but Which like in early mid sixties that it was yeah, it was a thing middle, for a few years. Yeah, in the middle of the city. we were yeah. uh, me and uh, three other guys. We were influenced by Cecil Taylor, uh, yeah. Ornit Coleman, uh, uh, that kind of music. Yeah, and we had fun. Yeah, but uh, did, that, did the audience have fun? That's the question. I think so. <laughs> we had a we had a fan club. Okay, uh, people who who really. Like this, what, what we did. Yeah. Are there any recordings? We we did. Uh, there are two uh, things on on a record. Okay. Uh, Swedish jazz history. Okay. Oh yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. they, they, there's yeah. a whole series. So it's, yeah. It's, yeah. They it's, came out a few years yeah. ago. So um, when, when was when did you do your first recording? Like uh, 1972. I did my first. That was your album. first album under yeah. your own name. Yeah. Right. Uh, Nils Sandström. My name is Nils. Uh, Nisse, I, I played with Art Blakey and yeah. he said, Nisse, what a name! Yeah. And I, <laughs> I told him, it's the same as Santa Claus. Santa. Yeah, exactly. Uh, th that's, it is. And uh, it's the nickname, of course, for Nils. Nils. N-I-L-S. Yeah. That's, the, that's the, your real name. Yeah, so, so, yeah. so the name is Nils Sandström, the painter. And I have, I'm dressed up like a uh, yeah. painter. Sit, I'm sitting with a table and the saxophone in front. Yeah, and that that was an important album because you won the the mm -hmm. gold record for, for. There was a big award from Orchestra Konal, which is our Swedish jazz magazine. And yeah. back then, that was a big deal to get. They they have these kind the, of sort of the record of the year. Yeah, the record yeah. of the year every year. Yes. That, yeah, I didn't believe it. I. I and when they told me about this, uh, it can't be true. I, uh, that, that must have been a yeah, huge deal. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, too much for, for yeah. me. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And, and, what, and what, that, what came out of that? Well, that somebody important heard that record. Yeah, Red Mitchell, this Red Mitchell, famous yeah. word. Uh, yeah. Famous bass player, one of the best in the world. Yeah. He he uh, lived in Sweden. He phone, he called me on the telephone and asked me, uh, "Do you, I like to start a new sextet? Do you do you like to join us?" Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it was a fantastic group. Yeah, uh, good trumpet player, Busse Grube and uh, Bertil Stamberg, uh, good trombone player. Yeah. This, uh, you know, and, and Bet Bettel, of course, he later moved to the States. He played with Artist Shaw for yes, a few years, right? Yes, he played right? with Artist yeah. Shaw, that's right. Yeah. Uh, it was a good group. Yeah. And uh, I did my first uh, arrangement for Sextet in that group. But you didn't have, how, I mean, you're, you're a good piano player too, so you, you, but you never took any arranging lessons or anything. No. Since, since you don't want to take any lessons. No, no, <laughs> not like lessons. Yeah. But yeah. how did you figure I out? I prefer to give lessons. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> how did you figure out what to write? Uh, or or for, for when you arrange for how voicings and things, did you? I listened to, uh, basically for, for, Tad Dammer on that kind of style. Okay. Uh, or a silver jazz mills and use. Yeah. It's very easy to hear when when this classical type type of ensemble, trumpet, tenor sax, trombone. Yeah, you can hear you the can voicings. Hear the voicings very yeah. clear. Yeah. And and, and uh, figure out uh, how how they Yeah, which work. is kind of an extension from the early jazz when they had the you, you still have the three Three horn front mm -hmm. line with back then it was used to be trumpet, clarinet, and 
cr trombone, and then yes. eventually the clarinet sort of yeah. got replaced by a saxophone, by a tenor. But it's, yes. it's kind of the same type of ensemble. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I like that kind of music too, uh, because it's kind of uh, Dixland, uh, New Orleans music. It's uh, reminds me. It's like the baroque music yeah. in jazz. Yeah, you have three. They playing three. Trumpet. It's, it's the, independent voices too. Yeah. They, they weave the, more. The, the trombone is playing. Uh, I heard a trombone players say that they play like they play in on Cuba. That kind of trombone player. Yeah, it's very rhythmic. From West. And, uh, yeah. 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 And the clarinet is playing up there. Yeah, now. kind of yeah. weaving around. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. And of course, the, the newer kind of it's, voicing. It's, it's, it's contra. Counterpunctual, oh, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, and of course with new sort of more bebop, it's more you have voices. They the voices yes. are more they follow each other. It's it's yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it's not as it's orga orga organic. Also. Yeah, yes. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but but the thing with you is like you <laughs> you can transcribe pretty much everything. You transcribe the whole birth of the cool album. Yes. Right. By, uh, yeah. I, I think uh, uh, I, I like to 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 Toby Flanagan. He he also like to transcribe uh, yeah. Tad Amaral's music. Yeah, okay. For, you know, on piano, you yeah. can play the whole arrangement. Yeah. But uh, and I I think it's something that you can practice and uh, uh, and learn yeah. how to how to to make it. Yeah, because I you know. Oh, this is several years ago before I moved to the States, but I got to play. We did Birth of the Cool. Yes, we we did. Yeah, and yeah. then I I played in the States. I pl actually played sort of the real arrangement. Somebody had had you know bought mm. the charts. Yes. And the interesting thing was th the parts were identical. The ones that you took off the record were identical to the printed parts. Yeah. That, so you're you're a master transcriber. You. You really got it done. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, Jeru by Jeru Mulligan. Yeah. It's, I, I, I missed something there, but it sounds better. <laughs> oh, really? Okay, yeah, maybe so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something, you know, in this music. It might have been that on the recording, the pro the, it might have been that somebody played the, the wrong note, and then you you figured out that, okay, it's, this yeah. is what it should yeah, have so. been. I have my solution for yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah. Sometimes we are lucky in this business. Yeah, exactly. You have to, yeah. be, to be a musician, you have to be lucky. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so, so you, you played with Red a, yeah. a lot. I you, played with him for 15 years. Yeah. And then and, before, he moved back to the States eventually, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and actually, he passed away fairly soon after he moved back, didn't he? Uh, yeah. I think he, he died in 92. Yeah, something. yeah, that's probably yeah. right, yeah. But I learned so much from, from yeah, him. What was it? Because, I mean, we, obviously we had, we had great bass players in Sweden yeah. before Red, when he came. Yeah. But he came, what, what was different about Red? Uh, for the first, he, he, his uh, uh, musical background, I mean, he had played with everybody. Yeah, he played. He Big played band. with uh, what's the guy's name? The piano player, the the famous conductor. Now he's uh, Andre Previn. Andre Previn. Yeah. He played with Andre Previn. Yeah. Yeah. He, he played with the best. Yeah, he was on yeah. the West Coast. He was yeah. in in L.A. Yeah, he moved to to. He, he was from New York, but yeah. he, he moved to to because of uh, this film music. Yeah, the movie, movie business. Movie, so there's, movie, there's, there was a yeah. lot of work back then. Exactly. Yeah. So so he he. His uh, musical qualities, uh, and he played. He was a piano player from the beginning. I didn't know yeah. that. He played yeah. with Charlie Ventura's band. Really? Okay. As a piano player. I had no idea. I, I mean, I've seen some and things he did when he played. He, he played he, piano, he but he could yeah. play guitar, huh. like Wes Montgomery. Wow. And and he never played it. Uh, yeah, like in public. But he yeah. played it for me sometimes. And that right? He played so well, so yeah. sometimes he started to laugh himself. Oh really? Oh, <laughs> I'm too. <laughs> uh, yeah. he, and he learned it when he he got sick of TB, 
and he was on his hospital for oh, eight months. Yeah. And he had a guitar. So he learned to play Is guitar. Right? Wow. And he, he played with Jimmy Rainey, who was one of, yes. one of the best. Yeah. He played in Stockholm uh, with uh, Billy Holiday. 1953 or something. Red did? Mm -hmm. So he Red, was on the road with Billy uh, Holiday. That's pretty. Red and uh, Rolfe Berry, the Swedish guitar player. Because yes. uh, yeah, Jimmy yeah. Rainey didn't like to fly. Okay. Uh, he took the boat. So he came okay, so he came. It was uh, late to the gig. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Why is that right? And then, so he ended up in Stockholm eventually in 1968, right? Red did. Yes. And then he. He did. And it was very influential on the on Swedish jazz scene. Then he yeah, played. Yeah. He had his own his own groups and played with everybody. Yes. Yeah. He he was a soloist. Yeah. He could really play yeah. some fantastic solos. Yeah, well, I mean, one of my favorite albums is the one you did, and that's where I stole the tune that I, we play on, on my album, yeah. uh, uh, Caught In. Yes. It is the, the album called Home Cooking, which yes. is it's you, Red Mitchell, and Tom Flanagan on piano. Yeah. And if I understand it right, it was <coughs> recorded in his living room. That's you, right. You didn't, you didn't do it in the studio, right? No, in, no. in Red Mitchell's living room. Yes. Okay. <gasps> Uh, we had fun. We, we, we just played. Yeah, did you? Was it planned out or anything? Did you have no. a, a charge or it sounds no, no. very spontaneous? Had, you just played. We had never yeah. had a charge. Yeah, everything was. Uh, what are we going to play now? Old milestones. Yeah, uh, we played a thing by J. J. Johnson, Lament, and yeah. Red said. We we have to find out the court. Call JJ. I mean, we, we if we are going to play Beaton, we can't make a phone call to yeah. him. But JJ, you can call JJ. Can call him. Yeah. And they call uh, Tommy. Called JJ. Yeah. We like to. Uh, <coughs> I mean, tell me the court. Over the phone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, half an hour later, we had it. And we played it. <laughs> wow. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's such a great album. Yeah. And, yeah. That was in mid early 80s, maybe. Uh, or late 70s. Uh, 1980. 1980. 1980. Yeah. And you also, so with you and Red and Tommy Flanagan went to the States in 79, right? 79, yes. Yeah, and played everywhere. We played in, in uh, Detroit. Okay. Uh, uh, Tommy Flanagan's birth. Time. That's where he's yeah. from, yeah. Th that was an experience, yes. And th there was somebody in the audience, if I remember. Yeah, we, yeah. Ella Fitzgerald sat, sat, sat uh, three uh, very close to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And digging. Uh, not because of me, yeah. uh, because Tommy Flanagan was working with. She, yeah, he was working with uh, her thir for lot. 13 years. Yes, yeah. But it was nice to, to meet her. Yeah. Very humble. Yeah. Very nice yeah, to yeah. talk to. Her. And uh, uh, Count Basie's uh, band was sitting in the audience. Okay, listening. great. And your shearing quartet was there. And an old gentleman uh, stand up and shout, I didn't know they served shitlings in Sweden. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's. That's a good, that means you're accepted into yeah, the yeah, jazz yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, yeah. You, they have chitlins in Sweden, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we, we only have our Swedish meatballs here. No. Yeah. <laughs> and then you, you played Village Vanguard, right? Yeah, yeah. Village Vanguard, and uh, we played a week in, in uh, Village Vanguard. Wow. And then I played with a famous piano player, Fred Hurst, his okay. portrait, yes. tri his trio, okay. plus me. Yeah. And. Uh, one evening, it was a good, ten, good tenor player, I don't remember his name, but I understood later that he played with Chic Korea's band. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, great. had fun. Yeah. Did you ever feel you wanted to sort of stay in the States, or no, you want to back uh, to Stockholm? No, I, I, I'm always homesick. Yeah. Mm. So, but it was a very nice experience yeah. to, to go to the States, uh, yeah. to play those top places. Well, it's kind of it's kind of nice for you because you kind of sailed in and you started at the top, sort of. For <laughs> most of us, it doesn't work that way. But you 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 got yeah, it's, it's uh, 
<laughs> You're right. Yeah, you um, start at the. I, I can't figure out what it. Well, because you obviously you can play. That's the that's the thing. We we were uh, visiting Atlantic Studio in New York. Okay. Uh, yeah. It was a kind of memory party for Charles Mingus, who okay. was one of Red Mitch's best uh, pals when oh, they yeah. were still were uh, 17, 18 years. Wow. Okay. Uh, and uh, Red played there. Yeah. Sonny Rollins played. There. Oh man. And all yeah. Charles Mingus musicians were there. And I had the uh, pleasure to to say hello to Nika Koenigswater. The Baroness. Oh, the Nika Rocha. Dream. Yeah. This the tune that Horace Silver wrote. Uh, yeah. Right? Yeah. And a nice little lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. And when the party was over, so to speak, uh, I sat down at the, uh, the piano and yeah. uh, played uh, uh, "Goodbye, Paul Pyatt" because I, I, I could play. I can yeah. play it. Yeah. Even the chords under the solo. And the young lady is coming running. Uh, and sat beside me and sang it. Wow. Uh, yeah. Johnny Mitchell. Johnny Mitchell? No yes. kidding. Yeah. That's what. Wow. That was what Red Mitchell said when he asked me, who was that? It was Johnny Mitchell. Uh, no kidding. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. She's, uh, and, and, yeah. and she said, uh, it's, uh, um, I'm sorry that you couldn't play with, with me earlier this evening because the other piano player they couldn't play this. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and, I, and I answered, I'm not a piano player, I'm, uh -huh. a, I'm a saxophone player. Yeah. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's great. Yeah, that, that, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's pretty heavy stuff. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. It was. Yeah. So, uh, the, 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 it's a thing that you can't expect. Yeah. It just happens. Yeah. And it's something too with jazz music. It's you know I'm, nowadays I'm mainly a classical player. I play a lot of operas, but with the, the jazz world, it's it's like we talked about earlier mm -hmm. when we did our Swedish <laughs> version of the interview. That you know if you play a classical piece, you practice it, then your group work you work on it, and mm -hmm. you sort of know what's going to happen on the on on the concert. With on a jazz gig, you never anything can happen. Yes. Yeah, and uh, I think uh, th that's the secret of jazz music. Yeah, uh, and uh, I think the, the, the most musicians are hope they think that this is going to be great this yeah. evening. Yeah, you have that you, kind of. Uh, you have this sort of energy yeah. and that sort yeah. of. They are prepared. Yeah. Now we are going to play. Yeah. The best, but of course, the, I mean, the, even a string quartet—they're prepared too. But they—they mm -hmm. they don't have. For, with the jazz musician, you go in, it's like, okay, we have no idea what's going, or we have a little bit of clue. Anything can happen, but you're sort of prepared for for the best, sort of. Yeah, yeah. A string quartet—they can't change yeah. anything, not too much. They, yeah. A little, but yeah. the jazz musician—he can suddenly turn yeah, to the room and say, "Stop! Yeah. I play alone." Yeah. Uh, a long break. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's spontaneous in uh, a different the, way. This gives this music more, even more en energy. Yeah, yeah. So if how if if you you working a lot with young musicians, which mm -hmm. you sort of seek out younger players, and we're talking young, like in their teens. There, there's yes. a, a, there's some good schools around mm -hmm. here, like the the uh, the high school in North mm -hmm. Shopping, which yes. has a, several. A lot of players had gone through that school. Yeah. Uh, what do you, what do you tell young musicians? Like yeah. sort of career advice. You have both the mm -hmm. the musical things you need to work on, but then there's also how do you make a living playing jazz music? And they, or, they they are, let's say they are prepared to play. Yeah. I mean they can read. Yeah. Pretty well. And I gave them I give them this uh, my own. Arrangement. Yeah. There are some famous things from Miles Davis, or a Silver's repertoire, or Blake, and so, yeah. so on. And now we play, and and the the drummer they know how to, to they, play. Yeah. The bass player play the, what's yeah. written out, and the, and the, some of the horn players, uh, 
they can be very shy, you know. They, yeah, they, it's it takes a lot of guts yeah. to, to stand up and basically... After a couple of months, yeah. they start to improvise. Okay. It's not so dangerous. Yeah. And, and they, they feel more safe. And, and yeah. They, after one year, they are good. That's when they get into so, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it takes it yeah. takes a little bit of guts to stand up and play an improvised solo. Yes. Because it's yeah. Uh, yeah, I be, yeah. I must be careful in the be, in the beginning. You know. You don't want it was you don't want it to be happen like your first lesson when they run out crying. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, it works very. I have. I get yeah. energy from from these young musicians. Yeah, they, yeah. They like it, you know. They, yeah. they, they like to improvise and play. And do you worry about because I mean, you know, I teach at some schools, and sometimes I'm thinking, man, we're just we're training all these musicians, and they they can really play, but there's not much of a market out there. You know how do you how do you get, how do you gonna make a living playing the trombone or the saxophone or what, do you have it, do you talk about those things with your students? Uh, not so much because uh, I don't I don't uh, like to talk too much about pessimistic things. Yeah, exactly. Because if you if you start thinking about <laughs> yeah. it, you, uh, you, you uh, get pretty blue. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we're talking about this beautiful future. Right? Yeah. Exactly. But but. Uh, uh, I mean, these young musicians, they know uh, they are listening to records, young yeah. records. Yeah. they are prepared to play. Yeah. Uh, and I t tell them that when I, to I, I met a, a very famous tenor saxophonist, Jimmy Heath, yeah. I, I told him that when I started to play, I was trying to imitate Charlie Parker and uh, Hank Mobley and Dexter Gordon, and Jimmy Heath said, I did the same. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So uh, yeah. you start to imitate, uh, yeah. and then you get your own style. You get your own sort of your mm. own voice, your exactly. own sound, mm. and then uh, because you, you can't imitate them too well. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. But it's a it's a it's a way to start. Yeah. Beside uh, to learn how to read music and so exactly all the sort of the basics. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Great. So, what what are your future plans now? You have, uh, you're still going strong. At I mean, I, I can't believe this, but you're 75 years old. Yes, I'm and you're 75 years young, <laughs> and you're still playing. Yeah, I'm still yeah, playing. You played last night, and, and uh, I had a stroke uh, four years ago. I didn't even know that. Uh, really? Uh, and my left hand is not, uh, uh, not so, so well. Okay, I could not hear that when uh, we played no. the, the other day. I, I uh, could not hear. Do you know and what a friend to me, a saxophone player, Gunnar Andersson, yeah. who lives here, he lives in Stockholm. Yeah. Uh, he said, maybe they can't hear it. <laughs> I could, I could not hear it. That, no. Really? So has no, it yeah, affected no, I, your playing? Or, no, or? no. I think uh, it works pretty well. Yeah. I don't need to play that fast. <laughs> it sounded when we played the other day. It sounded plenty fast to me. I could not keep up. So, <laughs> so okay. So yeah. But and you're you're obviously and you're writing. You're composing. Yeah. You're doing a lot of yeah. Projects. yeah a whole lot of things that uh, yeah. uh, I have to do things. I, yeah. I'm a restless guy. Yeah. We we should make an album. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Trombone yeah. and tenor. It's that's a beautiful, beautiful sound. That's a beautiful sound. Yeah, it's yeah. it's like uh, I, sometimes I feel uh, jealous when I hear a trombone player like you, because you have a sound that's almost a little more beautiful than tenor sax. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't say that, but maybe to you. But when I I'm, I'm hearing myself, it's like. Holy moly! <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm, yeah. uh, I tell yeah. uh, what I tell the truth now. Yeah, okay. The trombone sound is uh, something that yeah. makes me jealous. Oh, okay. Well, that was nice to hear. <laughs> that was nice to hear. So, and uh, have to be open. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And uh, yeah, and also another little side thing. You're 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 such a creative 
guy and always looking for new things and you you're actually acknowledged not just house painter you can paint a house mm. uh, I mean you can paint any room out there but you're also like an artist you you do paint you paint yeah, yeah, yeah and you've had the exhibitions and stuff and, and uh, yes yeah that's right I, I did the, the record cover for uh, home cook. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's 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 the, it's the cover. It's it's the, it's the band from, at uh, Village Vanguard. Village right? Vanguard. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And uh, is that something? Because it, uh, with music, you you're constantly playing and doing stuff for music. But are you as? Are you always working on your painting too? Like the, your. I have artist? some kind of periods when I start to, to, uh, to just paint. Okay. Do, and, do, and is, then, does music sort of come to the side a little bit then? Or, yeah. Or, or, okay. It, it, yeah. Uh, and uh, it's very nice to to to, to uh, start that kind of painting yeah, yeah, because yeah. Uh, it's like music. The more you work with, it's, it works better. Yeah. Better. The better you yeah, get. Yeah. 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 And uh, uh, I, when I listen to music, uh, to old records, I think. What is new or what is old? I mean, yeah. I can find things. Uh, with, we're talking about Louis Armstrong. Yeah. That he plays that it's you can it's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, and you, and when yeah. I hear my own old records now, uh, I can hear new things. Yeah, I like the saxophone player Lucky Thompson. Oh, his what sound, the, yeah. the way he plays, it's it's heavenly. Yeah. Oh yeah, so there. Yeah, so there's. I mean, that's the fascinating thing. And, and uh, I know your Mozart. He's your yeah. big uh, uh, hero. Yeah, he, yeah, he is. Yeah, I mean, you always say that he was. There's, there's been one genius. Yeah, he in music, was. And he was the one. Uh, one uh, old uh, pal to me. He, he said that Mozart was a bebop player. Yeah, exactly. And, and, uh, that was before I, I have discovered Mozart. Okay. Because I said, what is he talking about? Yeah. I think that, I, I thought that music was, uh, uh, like that you would call it fag music. <laughs> oh, really? Fad, fad said that? Yeah. Well, okay, yeah. But, but no, but then but you start listening to then, it. And then I not. heard uh, a concert, uh, yeah. uh, Adagio and Fugue in, in C minor. Yeah. And then I got knocked me out. Yeah. Mm. yeah exactly. And I saw on, on your piano here you have. Uh, well, it's interesting because you, you're a bebop player, but mm. you, you had Mozart piano sonatas on mm. the piano. You have a whole wall you can't see here of jazz CDs here and as many classical CDs yes. on this yeah. side. Yeah. And, uh, mm. and you, you listen to everything. Yeah, I listen to everything. Even folk music uh, is yeah. nice. It's, uh, I like the Swedish, it's Scandinavian. Oh yeah, it's, it's yeah. beautiful stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, yeah. that's great. Uh, well, Nis, I, I'm, I keep track of how much memory I have in my <laughs> my old camera. Yeah. It's been such a pleasure talking to you and learning yeah. a little bit. For me too. Yeah, it's fantastic. always nice and, to meet you. And hopefully we can get a few more people to discover your music because it's worth listening to. I'm gonna, you know, hopefully get some links and stuff. Or onto yes. the onto this, so great. Yeah. Hey, thanks so no, much. Thank Let, you. We never give up. Yeah. No, we don't. <laughs> we're we're from Katrina Hall. Yes. We never exactly. give up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> thanks. <laughs>